How we doing traders out there? Welcome back to, of course, another start swing trade. And again, again, I will say that we're, we're in a fast market. Things are changing up. And I, I know the title said I was short NVIDIA and I still am, but who knows with this little pop that we just got in the spy, we got a pop and a drop, right? A drop, a pop. Well, it's been a choppy one, that's for sure. Let's get right to the market. Let's take a look at what's going on right now. SPY just came back down from around kind of like the 412, 50 area. We went up there towards 412, 43s. I've been seeing 412s acting as resistance earlier, and we definitely took another downturn right after that rejection. This is what I was seeing earlier. We went down towards the low, and then we just bounced right back up. Why? I mean, I really don't know why we bounced there, but hey, you know how it goes. So NVIDIA on that first downside action move, I took a brand new trade on NVIDIA just a while back there. Of course, opened this up really close to here towards 1235. Um, and I ended up taking some profits. I put out an order to take majority of it off at 284.48. So as this started coming back down here in the 244s, Got there down here, and then we went to a low there of 248.28 and a low to the right of 248.13s. As it came down there through the 40s, I took majority of it off to take some profits. Now, of course, I'm just taking a look at it to see if I'm going to hold on to this trade or let it the rest go break even, right? I'm looking to see if we can get this downturn towards the close here in NVIDIA. And this is a brand new trade here. So we'll see what happens there on NVIDIA today. Let's review what I was able to get really nice profits in today. Of course, that was the Google upside trade. Yesterday, we were able to get this one and we, we just wrote it up, right? We got this one right around the high of the day uh, breakout move there and then sold it into the move into the show, right? At the show, we ended up taking some profits on this one. And then eventually Google kept riding up higher in the pre-market, taking the profits on the first kind of action up here towards the 117s. We were able to take profits at 117.07. So as soon as this started coming back down, I took some profits there. Tried to let it get to the 118s. It didn't get there. But am I going to be mad about that? No. I mean, it, it was over 5% trade there on Google. And that's just overnight. We got to go ahead and take that money and run. I'm not mad at it. I hope that somebody else was able to nail that Google trade. Of course, that was off the AI mention. And it got the lift. And kept going. Can't can't be mad about taking some green, right? All right, catching up with the chat. What's going on out there? Jay, Kevin, how we doing out there? Lakeland, Florida. Yeah, man, I know exactly where Lakeland is. I used to play a little baseball near there, but let's keep it going, team. What else is being out there? Mystery man, how we doing? I see an evening star on the SPY five-day chart. We'll see. Does that mean we're getting a little bit of a downturn coming soon? It could be, right? Armored plates, how we doing out there? I saw you talking about puts on Pack West. Hmm, do you got any? I know I don't, but I can definitely take a look into the regional banks. That's what I wanted to see if we were going to cut right back down. Look how I kind of drew these lines. It's not really trading lines that I'm looking at here. It's more along, hey, are we making this move up higher or are we just stair-stepping to the right, gaining some volume, and now going to crush down here towards the close? A move down here would definitely probably start bringing more and more scare into the market. So that's what I'm paying attention to. Of course, I'm looking at the banks. That's a very important outlook right now. Of course, let's take a look at Pack West specifically today. And you guys can see how that's just been going sideways there. And let's take a look at Wall. Wall is another important one here. I'm going to be watching towards the close to see if this one wants to just cut right back down. And start coming down towards the 25s. This one doesn't look too bad to come right back down. So it's just going to be a matter of, let's see, do they sell off here towards the close? Something to keep an eye out for. All right, Carmen, how we doing out there? Hammer, I was listening to Sailor earlier. What were you listening? What did you talk about Bitcoin? Hmm. All right, Mitch, I feel like this month the market is going to sell off. Hey, it's something to think about, right? Who knows if it's going to happen right now? EKS still holding unity. Nice. Not a bad trade there, EKS. Remember yesterday we were day trading that to the upside. And yeah, I, I maybe would have made a lot more profits if I held it through the earnings. But 
hey, that's how it goes sometimes, right? I'm glad that at least somebody was in Unity for the longer move. And you can see there on the daily chart, not a bad little three, four day move. Let's see if it can get back there to Wednesday's high, 33.68. It's at 32.39. It's moving back at least and starting to get some real strength. What I like about it is that you now got a lot of buyers stepping in after nice bottoming action. You guys can see that here. I mean, just look at the chart, right? Nice bottoming action on that Unity. Now, now you're getting some under supply, not overhead supply, but under supply. And that should give it a little bit of continued lift. Now, of course, we could pull back a little bit like we did today. But look, that was quickly bought back up on the hourly. Yes, you went down to a low of 30, but then closed it back at 3168. That showed me that buyers stepped up there on the pullback there, especially right out the gates for Unity. All right, let's keep going. We'll take a look at some other ones. Hammer, you're taking a look at B Biddy. Hmm. We'll see what happens there. Wisdom, been in Google for two years. So all green for you. Hey, Wisdom, there's nothing wrong with that, right? You got to take your money. Now, my biggest thing is it wasn't a bad little overnight trade in Google. And that's all you can do sometimes, right? Long term is long term and profit's a profit, baby. Ain't going to be mad. And and it's all about protection, right? And, and how you kind of trade these. My biggest thing is, you guys seen it. I think I've taken two earnings trades in the last year and both of them have not gone well. So it just doesn't work out for me. And you got to know what works for you and what doesn't, right? Let's keep going. Bros, come on, man. Come on. Nah, I I've talked about this, man. And I love bros, Florida, Florida. It was very hard for me to be on pre-market prep and be negative about bros, but I, 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 I gave the outlook. And, and the big thing there is look into their earnings, right? You got to look in the fundamentals, the, fund, the fundies, man. The fundies, look at the same shop sales versus prior year. It's going the wrong direction there in bros. Even though I love the coffee, love the way that the business set up, doesn't mean that now is the time, right? And that's why the way it goes with trading. Just because something might look perfect doesn't mean the timing is going to be perfect. Starbucks is actually doing better, but you can see Starbucks recently started turning around. And this is actually looking pretty heavy now as this looks to start – Pulling back, got to be careful on a name like this that had been really strong, made a couple of attempts to break higher, now can't even break back there towards the 110 and rejecting over here around the 108. So doesn't seem like bros is the area to be in right now. So I will definitely stay on the sideline. All right, let's talk about some other trades. NCLH is one that I opened up yesterday. This one's in the red. I was able to add to it today a little bit. Added a little bit at NCLH. Let's see what I have now. I have an average at 87. Added at 13.74. Um, Want to continue maybe adding on this one. Uh, it did pull back a little bit there, but doesn't look too bad overall. 13.87 uh, entry right now. Average. We'll look to see if this one can make its way back. This is my kind of more of a daily outlook. Um, you guys can see this kind of pullback. Really, it's going to be about tomorrow, right? Can we really start pushing back there towards 1425? That's what I want to see. I want to see it close eventually above 1475. But for right now, a little bit of a pullback in a slight red position in this swing. But I'm letting it work, right? This is going to be one that we got to give it a little room and look to see what happens. I will keep an eye out on Norwegian Cruise Lines holding. How's RCL doing today? Pulling back also, right? This could pull back to the 9 EMA, 9 EMA before we get that next lift up, right? We just recently got earnings on that, so we'll keep an eye out. All right, let's keep going. Let's take a look at some other stocks in the market right now. And, of course, um, I'm going to keep watch on that NVIDIA to see if it can keep coming down. Of course, I, I've already taken some profits. But if it comes back towards 286.91, that's where I'm in right now. Really, I'll hold it to like 287, but other than that, I'm going to get out. We'll see what happens in the market to see if we get that downturn. That's going to be all for me if they start just kind of crushing on KRE, crushing on the bank trade. And that's why we could maybe even do a little bit of an FAZ uh, day trade today. I actually lost on this one earlier today, and I haven't traded it since then. Does this one want to start coming back there towards 2240s, 2250s? Going to keep watching here towards the end. Q's look like they're trying to push a little bit. So keep your eyes on maybe if Google wants to take another step up.
that could be something that we could maybe day trade here. But let's see what if Google wants to take that next step up. Doesn't look too bad overall. Pulled back. Now starting to try to get a little strong. Apple overall, that's coming back after kind of a red open. I watched all this action happen. And then it just started climbing right back. Microsoft, how's that doing? That's doing not too bad there. Amazon, I watched this VWAP bounce earlier in the day. And Amazon's really got in the motor going. Remember, I talked about that I was looking at maybe Amazon to get moving after shops really nice move. And look at Amazon. It's really started to get the motor going. So this is one that I'm actually going to look to see. For I talked about this before. Would we get the golden cross here where the 50 is going to make a quick move through the 200? And I think that that's exactly what we might see here. So Amazon, definitely one that I can be looking for day trades back to the upside. Pullbacks or longer term pullbacks on the hourly. Those look like good opportunities right now. We'll see what happens there on Amazon as it goes higher. All right, catching up out there. My earnings stocks have been crushing it lately. Holding FLNC. Uh, Fluence Energy. Mm, not anything I know of, man. But hey, not too bad. I mix technicals, analyst upgrades, and fundamental analysis. There you go. So, I mean, essentially, uh, analyst upgrades go depending on fundamental analysis, right? And so... That already within itself combines the variables with some technicals. And ain't nothing wrong with that. I like the idea, Hammer. Mitch, uh, where's your ex, man? Haven't seen you yell the anthem. Yeah, I, it hasn't been there, man. Uh, I know it came back at the open today, but steel is not the place to be right now. It's just on the quick decline. We talked about this yesterday. It's not a place to be right now. Yes, sometimes you get a little move out the open, but... This looks like it's just done. If you look at the basic materials uh, sector, it's not looking good. It's looking like it's falling off right here. And it's tried to make moves back up, but just can't do it. Even with gold, like gold is starting to turn around, team. Gold was going up higher, right? That's not working well there. Copper, that's not working well today. That's actually looking really bad. BTU, holes not turning around. So it just seems to me like this is not the place to be. Even the lithium name started to turn around a little bit today. LAC pulling back after a re recent kind of little push up higher. Um, you can look at PLL. That's even pulling back after a recent move up. So we'll keep this on watch. But if lithium names aren't going to move, steel names aren't going to move, copper names aren't going to move, definitely not an area I want to be. All right, what's going on, Manny? How we doing out there? And I will let you guys know we do not have a guest today. I was reaching out to a couple of guys, but it looks like I didn't get a response till late. Um, and and I agree. <laughs> I need more coffee too. Uh, it's kind of funny. I was talking to someone on Twitter and they responded to me. They're like, I need more coffee, man, if I'm going to come on. Me too, man. Don't worry. It's, that, it's just one of those days, man. We'll just do a little... A little water and keep going. It, it was an intense uh, kind of trading day earlier too. So I'm okay with taking it easy here towards the close, right? All right, let's take a look into NVIDIA. This is definitely one that I want to see. It really start making its move here towards the close. Now that we got multiple highs right here around this kind of 286.22s, I can add to this trade right now and then just hold the rest break even. That's not a bad outlook because you still got 284s below. And if this wants to come down, it won't be looking too bad. So you know what? I'm stepping up to the plate. I already made a really decent profit on the first move. So I'm going to step up to the plate here. I just added a little bit more. This ruins my entry overall. I'm not going to even lie. Now my entry just went from around 286.90s, right? Where I was up here. And I just added there at 285.83. Um, but that moves me all the way up there towards 286.37. So I'm actually placed this line right where I'm at, right? And so just to keep me in mind of my new average. So I'm just kind of right here. So I'm going to do a thicker line so I can keep that in mind. I'm not going to let it go back over that level. But I'm going to go ahead and I sized in there and now trying to get it right back into this 284.45 and below that. We'll see what happens here. Can we get this to start cracking? Can we get the cues to start coming right back down? 
SPY to start coming right back down. And of course, I want to see if those banks start the leaking. So Bank of America, JPM, Goldman Sachs, will those start coming down? Goldman Sachs also looks like a trade that I could take right now. Um, this is kind of just hanging out here towards the bottom, but looks pretty weak. Like it wants to start breaking down here. We'll see what happens if it does, but I'm going to leave it alone. Remember the other day I did a nice little one on Goldman Sachs towards the close. All right, let's keep going. We'll see what else is going on here. We like your ideas and that's what it's all about. At the end of the day, the only thing I can point at is what I'm looking at. It's up to you guys to knock it down, right? Um, and if you guys like to go short, hey, check it out, man. Uh, Matt's checking out Carvana. Let's take a look there. Carvana right back down here. And it, it is turning around right back to the red side. The only problem with Carvana, though, is there's a lot of volume coming in on this recent move. And I, I do think in the long run that, yeah, this, this company could turn uh, disappear. But they've been trying to turn things around. So just be careful. Because whenever I go shorting names, I got to really be careful for that short type of squeeze type of play. And as you get lower and lower, you get more chances for those short squeeze. So Carvana, I could see coming back down to 10, 9. That seems to make sense as it pulls back here. But we'll see if it keeps cutting lower. And you're short on it? Hey, wish you the best, my friend. We'll see if you're able to nail that one. All right, there was another one that today I saw Elliott Wave getting into, and I didn't take the shot earlier at 14 because I felt like the market really wasn't going anywhere. And you guys can see here, I had the line drawn there already, and I can even show you guys the date and time there. So it's like I'm not, not like it's not, I wasn't looking at it, but it made that 14 move, pulled back to 1386, held there, now back to 14. Is this one that we want to keep a watch on? Well, it did do a huge move here in the day because of that Elliott uh, management mention. And we've seen how the Elliott before has really gave stocks that lift. We'll see what happens here on Goodyear Tires. Let's go to some other stocks. Let's take a look at what was moving today. And there's the SPY moving down. So that actually makes me feel a little bit more confident here in that NVIDIA trade as we're right back there towards VWAP. Let's see if this can go lower. I'm actually going to set an alert here around the 285s. So just let me know as it starts to come lower there um, as we can keep, keep coming down here. Let's see if we can start really breaking down. All right, everybody's favorite pastime. Was there a bear trap or a bull trap? Only one way to find out. Carvana, uh, my guess it was all short covering. Yeah, it could, I mean, it could have been, but we, we don't know. But it was a lot of volume there, definitely on the recent move. Uh, took it easy most of the day, catching some scalps here. Hey, knock them dead, Walter. Get them. Uh, can we look at Disney short? Kevin, I got no problem taking a look at that. We'll see. We'll take a look at it, and then we'll go into the sectors. All right, Disney, how do you look at this short? Well, this one was a real a knockdown. I mean, the earnings came through, but then the earnings weren't that great either. And I think that one of the headlines that really kind of probably shook people was when the CFO mentioned, right? The CFO mentioned that, you know, that they could, um, and this was the exact line here, Disney's CFO predicts continued softness in Disney Plus subscribers may linger into Q3. So I think that was a really not a good outlook there from, given by Disney. You can see how it flushed down. The only kind of trade that I can see on today would be shorting off the VWAP. And that's this orange line that you see here. But you got to give yourself some room, right? You got to be looking to the left, seeing where you can reject from. And this still went up a little bit higher than I normally would like it to off of that 93.25 and then rejected right back down towards the low. So we'll see if this is able to break down and keep going lower. But for right now, it's just hanging off the lows and could catch a little bit of a bounce. But for right now, I think Disney isn't looking the best. At least the parks are looking better. But Disney Plus, that was supposed to be their ability to really kind of continue their growth, has really started to look ugly. And Disney making a wrong turn there to the downside. Netflix actually making a move up off of this. And if anything, it showed what? Netflix is still the king of content, team. King of content, man. And I feel like yesterday... And the day prior to that, we definitely got an opportunity here as this started pulling back to the 330s. I talked about that I liked Netflix yesterday and maybe should have took that shot off the 330s. It's back there to 345s. And I really do think that Netflix is just getting going. We could be right back into this kind of up gap 
and starting to make a move back towards 360s. 350s are in reach right now. That's 344. We'll see if this really gets the motor going, but not a bad looking chart there in Netflix. Way better looking chart than Disney. All right, let's keep going. Disney is not welcomed in my home, and I was short them till they vanish. <laughs> the truth is, is that uh, Netflix is king. That's the truth. All right, we'll see what else is continuing to make moves, and that also tells me that WBD probably continues going down. Netflix is the best, man, and that's where you want to be if you own something content-related. All right, we'll keep going. How's the NVIDIA move? Did we go keep going? That cut down? I'm sorry, guys. I'm just keeping an eye on it because I know how NVIDIA likes to move. It's fast. It's like in 10 minutes, it'll be right back down there. So keep an eye on it. We'll see what happens there. Let's go to the sectors. Uh, overall, consumer cyclical bouncing back today a little bit. High beta names just battling around right now. Of course, in the consumer cyclical area, we do got a lot of those high beta names Specialty retail, not doing bad today. Luxury goods, not doing bad. Um, in there, you got like Signet Jewelers having a decent day, pushing up higher. Uh, Movado pushing up higher. Fossil even getting a little bit. Oh, actually, this got hit. I'm, I'm interested. Uh, Fossil just keeps going down and down. And even though uh, Signet is making a kind of a little bit of a stand there. Uh, but I, I definitely don't trade luxury goods. So do I have an edge here? Not really, team. All right, let's take a look at what else is going on. Financial services, will they start to make a downside turn here towards the close? That's one thing that I'm looking at. We started kind of uh, falling off a little bit here at 3 o'clock. Let's see if this actually continues. That's why I'm watching the KRE to see if we go lower. Bank of America to see if we go lower. JPM, do we start to just cut down here? It looks like we're getting really toppy here. Now, the only question is, are we going to break to the upside here or come right back down? So keep your eyes to see what happens to the banks. Energy, also oil names today, right? They started getting a little bit of a bounce back. And I, I was even playing Oxy a little bit earlier today. And I played it for a little bit of a swing, wrote it up for a little bit, took a little bit of a gain. Uh, it, it, it really wasn't that much of a gain because it pulled back here and the market was kind of come, coming down. So I just got out of the name. But I have a feeling we'll find out that Warren maybe took a little bit more. We'll we'll see. This one still looked like a really nice setup. I just kind of got out of it. I would say I got freaked out of it because it was just kind of a break-even trade. It wasn't even in the red. But the key was that I was starting to get short on some names. And then I saw oil going higher. And I just left it alone. All right. Oil trade XOM. You can see that one was actually still in the red. So... Man, yesterday the shakedown really kind of ruined me there in that Exxon Mobil trade because this was the real look to get Exxon Mobil from around the 110s to 111 short down there back there towards the lows of 105.91s and then taking it through that level. Well, I messed up on this trade team this week and sometimes you're going to mess up on the trade. I was really looking for the 110 to 111 areas. I'm sure you guys have heard of it, but there you guys see it rejecting there yesterday getting the shake that got me out and now it's right back down there towards where the target originally was so sometimes you got to stick hard to that planned attack and not get out until it gets to your risk that's how it is sometimes team all right it looks like uh christopher is going to be joining us not too bad man i'll get you the link in two seconds here i'll buy i'll, I'll start wrapping up all right, let's go ahead. Let's take a look there into the SPY as we come down a little bit here. Will we make a little bit of a down move towards the close here? Taking a look at like the KRE, will we get lower? It's just kind of really slow here. But let's see if we get a little bit of a speed up in the last 30 minutes as it's 327, almost 330 here. All right, on the downside, utilities coming off the, the kind of the move, uh, the recent move, basic materials, we've already talked about that. And then healthcare is pulling back strong after recent kind of really strong pushes higher. One area that I'd keep a watch on this is the, the drug manufacturers because they are going and getting hit today, but they're not really getting pounded on. And they could see a little bit of a turnaround. Lily's just continuing. Avi has pulled back significantly. AZN, not doing too much there. I'm keeping an eye on like a Bristol Myers because it's just kind of hanging on here. Maybe it starts making a move back to 71. I'm going to give it the, 
the time to really start showing me that it wants to drive. But right now, it looks like it's finding monthly support around 68. Let's see if it can actually make a move to 72 and start moving. All right, that's going to do it for at least my sector and industry outlook. I'm going to go ahead and send my man the invite so he can hop in here. And it looks like he got some coffee because I'll, I'll tell you what, I needed more coffee too, Chris. But hey, it is what it is. I'll roll with it. You know where we're at. Wisdom, what's going on, Mitch? Thanks for your delivery on the market. You're a star in my portfolio, and I wish abundance beyond sight. Hey, that's what it's all about, man. I, and I think it's very important, right? There's one thing that I see a lot in the industry, and that's what? That's me comparing my trading to your trading. The truth is, we all want to win. And if we can actually support each other, then maybe we can actually have a good time doing this, right? There's too much animosity out there. We got to be supporting each other. I want to see you guys win, especially when you're going about it in a process manner. All right, let me go ahead and bring down my charts. I'm going to bring on my guy in just a couple of seconds. Like always, you guys smash the like. Where's Zunaid? Zunaid's probably trading somewhere, Armor. He normally just joins for the live trading show because he does some other things for Benzinga, like affiliates and things like that. So reach out to Zunaid. Hit him up on hit him up on the DMs. I'm sure he'll give you an answer. All right, EKS, let's get to the action. Let's go ahead and bring on my man, Christopher, you all. How we doing? 10 Cheers. minutes. Cheers up, my friend. Pinky's up. That's Cheers. what I like to hear. Oh, Mitch, I tell you what, I saw your, your message come through, and I'm like, oh, man, that was 45 minutes ago. Oh, wait, no, it's not. That's in 15 minutes. Damn, I don't even know what time it is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the that. The story of life, my friend. The only thing that matters is when that bell rings, baby. That's right. Yep. <laughs> How you doing, uh, man? What's new? Hey, man, just battling, man, in this market. Uh, yesterday, it was, seems like a little, it was a little bit of a fast market towards the close, and I was actually trading that action a little bit. And today, it seems like it's a little bit of a slowdown here towards the close. And that's just how it can go sometimes. I've uh, been taking shots. You know me. I can't help myself. Um, but right now, like, I'm taking a shot on, like, a, a little bit of an NVIDIA short. And that that's worked out for today. And, I mean, it's kind of more been hmm, kind of more of a, a renting vehicle for me. Nothing overnight because I don't trust it overnight. But – Today, you can see how you kind of got that little hit down. I was able to get that kind of uh, bounce back, right yeah. back down, and was able to take some profits. And then I just added to it recently, literally live here. Kind of ruined my average a little bit by doing it, but I, I went for it. So um, went for the that. little bit of a swing here towards the close. And I think the big thing for me is just watching the banks, right? I mean, that's really where it's been at right now. It's just kind of keeping up with KRE, figuring oh, out yeah. what the hell is going to happen here. Are we uh, going to go lower? What's going to what's going on with the regional banks? Well, you know, I, I can actually provide says some insight one day in they're that. good. Um, I, I actually do consulting with uh, credit unions, and yeah. um, I I spend a lot of time working directly with uh, uh, their board of director board of directors and their C suite executives. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not uncommon out in the yeah. uh, the industry. Exactly what happened uh, was, and and I told them a hundred times over, don't do what you're doing. But they were going out as long as they could, trying to find yield over the last couple of years, right? Because yeah. a financial institution, just like everybody else, uh, they take in deposits, and, and that could be like your paycheck, and then they try and make investments with those. Sometimes yeah. they invest into loans, and sometimes they make actual investments. And a lot of times, they make these investments into mortgage-backed securities, uh, which should be very similar if you've seen the big short. Um, they call those like collateral uh, back securities or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're talking about like MBSs, CMOs, things of that nature. Yeah. CMOs. And during the last several years when rates have been floored at zero, um, they've been going 10, 15, 20, 30 plus years trying to capture any sort of yield. And so when I'm talking capture yield, I'm, I mean, we're talking two and a quarter, three and a half percent, maybe on the high end. And now three and a three and a half percent you can get overnight. So all of these um, institutions have layered in tens and tens and hundreds of millions of dollars, potentially billions of dollars, depending on the institution, in these securities. That as the Fed raises rates, they're getting smushed, man. They're getting their market value if they had to liquidate those securities, getting smushed twenty percent, thirty percent, forty percent. And now when there's any sort of liquidity liquidity crunch, like we saw at Silicon Valley Bank like we saw at um, uh, First Republic Bank, right? 
if there's mm-hmm. even rumor of a bank run and people go, in order to fulfill those obligations as they come due, they have to sell out those securities. Well, Mitch, imagine you've got a billion dollar balance sheet. Half of that is in these mortgage backed securities and half of those mortgage backed securities are only worth 60% of what they were. Your billion dollar balance sheet just turned into 700,000 or 700 million. That's yeah. a big problem. You just you just wiped out $300 million and now you can't fulfill those depositor obligations. That's a huge problem. So huge problem, in a nutshell, man. that's what's going on out there. But I will say uh, there are some banks, the ones that are getting by right now, banks and credit unions um, that were really smart and they are actually making more money today than they have in years because they can just put it on overnight with zero risk and just rake in the cash. So depending on the management style, it depends on how they're actually making money in this market. Yeah, and then it, it, the, the problem there is that it becomes kind of more the writing on the wall, right? And then what happens is like people start coming in here and not even looking inside underneath the hood and they're just going shorting. Um, oh, yeah. So so that happens easily, too. And that's one thing that I've noticed. And it feels to me like there is kind of I, I know I've heard of talk about this, like hedging going on that's going against these regional banks. Um, well, but, I'm not much of a fundamentals person, but if yeah. someone is so inclined, this is actually where you can get a real leg up. And I say that because all of these banks have a uh, quarterly reporting that they do for the FDIC. If you are so inclined and are savvy enough on where to find these quarterly reports, you can actually go see how long their investments are, what the average rate is on those investments, and you can get an idea of, hey, oh, as rates go up, they're going to be fine. Or as rates go up, they're so screwed. So I'm just saying the data is out there if you want to go find it. Definitely is. And I think that that's one thing that I'll keep an eye out for, especially on the regional bank side. Does it start to really collapse some other banks? Right. I mean, that's the concern right now. Um, We see it with PacWest today. Um, Wall has been one of those stocks that has been mentioned with that. And I think that we're just looking to see if the kind of this turns around even bigger banks, because uh, like I've been pointing to kind of Bank of America's weakness as of late and it just seems like it's just hanging out here at the bottom, not really getting any love, and at any point could pretty much let go through 27. So I'm, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on all that. I think it's very important. Like I've talked about it yesterday, I felt like the only thing that was starting to keep that, that would keep me in the bear camp would be more bank concerns. And it seems like they just keep roaring their ugly head because if this wasn't here, where do you think the market would be, Chris? Look, man, this is this is systemic, right? This is not something that they can just turn on, turn off, right? They've loaded up their balance sheets in this way, and it's going to take time to unload those balance sheets, right? I mean, the weighted yeah. average life on these is going to be five, six, ten years. And so if they don't get a break from the market, then I don't know how they're going to uh, survive with higher and higher rates as rates go up, right? It's going to be a bloodbath, and it's really... Uh, this is trend following in a nutshell, right? If if the trend is down and everybody's stacking on top of that trend, it's going to get worse and worse and worse until a catalyst removes it and goes the other direction, right? Mm-hmm. But where would the market be? My dude, the market's gone sideways for the last two years. You want to zoom out? It's literally <sighs> two years without a change. Nobody wants to say that uh, the spy can go two years without changing, but we're living through it. And I think a lot of people are just feeling the frustration of, oh man, I'm so used to these bull market moves and now nothing's happening, right? And so if this weren't happening, maybe we'd be getting up a little higher, but I don't think that uh, the spy on its own uh, would be all that much different because the whole market in general is just, is just lackluster. It doesn't have a pulse anymore. Yeah, and it's uh, it's been like that for some time now, and we've been pretty much not, pretty much haven't gone much since January. Or, I mean, you guys see the topping action here on the weeklies. It just seems like we can't get uh, a break to the upside, can't get downward either. But that's not too bad right now. It's just been kind of hanging in there, quick trades, and it seems yeah. like I mean, it's um, basically the same price since May of 2021. Now, granted, there's been a huge run up after May of la- of 2021, but the price itself is like the same dollar from mm-hmm. now to May 2021, which you would never think that. 
So where do you see opportunities or maybe opportunities to kind of just play within uh, a stock picker's market? Because it seems like that's what it is right now. Mm. It seems like you can't really find specifically trends that want to keep going in certain industries. Yeah. Maybe you can think about it in, in tech, but what are you seeing, Chris? So for me and my traders, uh, we have not traded since February, which is hard to do as a trader, yeah. as an active trader is just sit on your hands. But one of the things that I would encourage uh, all of the Benzinga family to look at is the MMFI indicator. You can get that free on bar chart. Mm -hmm. And what that shows is the percent of stocks above or below their 50 day moving average. So basically in a nutshell is how much of the market is above its 50 day moving average or below. And then I just look at 50%, right? If I can't get 50% of the market to be bullish, then I'm just hanging out. I am not interested and fighting the trend and right now the trend is just sideways and until we get more breadth it's going to continue to be sideways the way the way i like to look at it is this right you got the general that is the spy which is moving up a little bit right mm -hmm. slightly bullish but all the soldiers are the mmfi all the stocks that make up the market they're not very bullish at this point still they're still 40 percent below their 50 day moving average yeah. so until they start aligning mitch there's just nothing to do right yeah and it's just kind of a little fight i mean you see the iwm that's still weak man that thing doesn't even want to move Nah, not that's even way. less of a move man and i feel like you know that that doesn't look good at least you know that it's includes not a little fun bit and more. sexy to come on and be like well nothing's happening <laughs> 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 but it's the truth yeah how, how do you feel about oil overall this this chart like xle how do you feel about that? Like I, that's a great start. But if you look at oil itself with USO, USO is mm -hmm. getting tanked, right? Yeah. It, it, there's a huge disconnect between XLE and USO, right? They're they're in two different trends. So that's not, I mean, you look at XLE, that, that yellow line, which looks like back about the 50 day. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the USO and it's been under its 200 day for ages. Yeah. Getting close to it. 200 day exponential, I should say. That's on my chart. No but worries. It's it's you know one's moving up and one's moving down, and that those should really be moving in lockstep. So that kind of shows you the weakness of uh, the market overall. That even traditional correlations they're breaking down. Yeah, and I, I'm looking to see if that oil trade ever breaks because I mean that's that's I think that's what you really need if you want to get inflation to two, right? Let's just be honest. If if you could break that oil trade, get oil back in the 50s, get oil back. You know, the 40s, you know, I remember for a long time, man, it felt like oil was just pe pegged to like 30s and like 60s. Oh, yeah. You remember those days? Chris, I, I do. When it was just yeah. it was like pegged. It was there just was like, like a up, different precedent at that time, down, too, my friend. Up. Exactly. That's true. <laughs> In that's fact, true. I believe that same guy, I'm not going to mention any names, but you probably know <laughs> who I'm talking about. I believe that same guy in his CNN town hall thing last night said the first thing he would do <laughs> is drill, baby, drill. So drill, you know, baby, drill, right? I mean, let's get be that realistic here. We down. need we need a lot stronger economy than what we have right now, and with a weak economy and rising rates, you're looking at stagflation, and it's just not a beautiful yeah. situation. And that's where the market's at right now. It's stagflating sideways. Yeah, we'll we'll see. I mean, it, it just hasn't been something to to really kick off. And I mean, we could look at like kind of the XLK. Um, of course, we're talking just purely technology here. How do you feel about the big boys like Google and stuff like that? Do they're you want to have action here? They're do you want to have some buy, exposure? Right? I mean, I mean, if you are looking to do something, you're looking at the mega caps because they're the ones that are really the only ones that are doing anything. Right. Yeah. I mean the 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 Fang stocks. At, what except for Netflix? Hang on. Let me look at Netflix real quick. <laughs> it's been so long since I've looked. Fang. At Netflix. That now we got to change like to some a Mang or something like that because it's Meta. <laughs> oh man. Mang. Yeah. The Mang stocks, bro. Come on. I, I gotta say, Meta has made more of a comeback than I expected. I was even on your show one day when I called the top on Meta, and I said I don't think it's ever gonna come back to three eighty. Yeah, and you it's know up what? There, man. It's 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 cr it's cruising on up. It's cruising on up. Somehow got to the two hundred. You would have told me at like one hundred that we're going back there to the two hundred. I would have been like, man. But that's the <laughs> thing, right? Is is it's only these stocks that are moving. Like everything yeah. else is just cruising sideways, not going anywhere, and only these mega cap stocks. Which makes so, me wonder, like, who's buying these? 
Exactly. Who's who's yeah. hiding in these? Is it just big boys that just got in at, at the beginning of the year? Maybe is it? Do you feel like that's what it is? Because if we think about it that way, right? That's what. That's the only thing that I could think about that would like. Because let's just be like, if we're money managers, right? January first, right? Of course, we kind of know what already happened. But if we're money managers on January first, we're thinking we have all this money that we need to put into work. Not yeah. not not we have an option, right? We just need to put it to work, and we're thinking. What do we do here? We don't know if the market's going up or down, but there's one thing that we do know is that if it ever does come back, back <laughs> I might want to be in some of the names that are beaten down the most right now. Yeah. Like an NVIDIA, like a Meta, right. like but an these, Apple these down. These things, right? right you, you, would, you would think that higher rates uh, should be working against them, right? You, would, like think, the banks, you would think, yeah. You, you would, would think, think that, that, that would affect the, that. The higher rates should be working against them because they have so much debt to pay, right? But I mean, on the flip side of that, also, if you're thinking that eventually the Fed pivots this year, if you're thinking that, these would probably be the first ones to go up too, right? Oh yeah, I think it would be slingshot. Yeah. I mean, and, it would be. So that's where it gets. That's think, where it gets hard, right? Yeah. To like determine absolutely. if you want to get in it now, because the truth is, that's what I think the money managers did. I feel like they got it. Because if we look at the the, vo the volume that, that really started coming in, and in Meta's, it's not the craziest in January, right? I could show you guys that right now. And this is like right here. You can see a little bit of a volume pop, but not really. I mean, it was kind of on this decline of volume, decline of volume, and then we just started making a move higher, right? Mm -hmm. And so from that, I would really say February would be that month where you really got that sign of confidence, right? Mm -hmm. That was a call you like a good earnings report that really started getting things moving. But if we look at like an Apple in January, you could see a little bit of a lift of the volume there. And I think that, you know, people just started taking some shots and tech names early on in January, right? I mean, look at this January. Wow, look at Apple's chart. Apple's almost back to all time highs. Yeah. Microsoft big jump there from December to to uh, kind of when you went into January. I mean, that, that wasn't a bad little month of volume. And I think that, that, that that's what, we, what we've been seeing here is them taking shots and names that they felt that, hey, if it comes down, I can grab some more Apple, right? Yeah. I can grab more Apple later in the year. I, I can grab more Microsoft later in the year. Mm -hmm. I can grab some more Google later in the year. But look at these charts. They're actually looking pretty powerful now. And this one is, yeah, I think, is actually, just starting yeah. to get strong. So this is one that I'm keeping an eye on. What do you think about Amazon now as we starting to really get above that 200 day? You can see today it started pushing. I've been what watching I shop. Amazon. I think that my wife single-handedly pays for all of their employees. By Don't worry, Kristen. I think we're going to be all right because <laughs> I've told you about the driver. He stops here before he looks if there's an order. <laughs> I, I don't know if I told you. There was one day where uh, I, I kind of live on a, a corner of the street. There was uh, two trucks that literally stopped outside my house at the same time, and they were both unloading. <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 no. This can't be coming to my house. <laughs> no, go It was back. like one broke down, and they were putting all the boxes in the other. But it was really funny. It just both of them outside my house at the same time. But, you know, Amazon has actually decent weakness compared to, like, the Apple or yeah. the Microsoft that we've been looking at, and maybe that's an opportunity. I mean, we're, we're talking it's right over there, 200-day right now. Mm -hmm. You've got all the other moving averages pointing up. You've got some solid moves from 110 down to 101, and then like a slingshot right back up to 112 right now. Yeah, and, and, I don't know, man. If it breaks this 112 area, we're looking to uh, potentially have some newer highs. I mean, this area where it's at today is roughly where it peaked out around February 2nd. And if it can go through that point i don't know man this may have some legs to it yeah and I, and I have the monthly chart here because this one thing that i've seen often is that the monthlies especially if you can go back to i mean you were you were paying up 2018 prices for amazon yeah 2018 prices there i i think we might have seen some money go in there and somewhere down there i mean i know that the the, the money was waiting for opportunities and Amazon got split in half. Let's just be honest. And well, look, at that, look at that chart though, right? Where it's it's such a strong bull move for so long. And then it tops, right? What is this cycle analysis right here? You've got your stage two run mm -hmm. up. Then you've got your stage three topping. And then your stage four run down. 
And exactly. I mean, right now, if you want to look at it that way, we're looking at a, a decent uh, stage one, but that doesn't necessarily mean that a stage two is right around the corner. Yeah, we, we, we need to get get it up in this space, right? Start getting back up into this space, and then mm-hmm. maybe we could get that little decline continuation. But one thing to note, and I've been looking at it, I mean, you've seen Shop's reaction, man? That was a good one. Mm. That that really started getting going, and then I, I've pointed to kind of how like Mikael Libre really has been strong as of late. Um, if we're looking at specialty retail, that doesn't look too bad of a chart. That's climbed back significantly. I mean, this went down to 600. It's back almost to 1400. Of course, this topping was about 2000 there, but it just seems to me like some of these are are really getting ready, getting ready, right? Because yeah. If for any reason we can get Apple through, let's say, you know, 180, which we're, we're really not that far from, man. Not at we're, all. we're not that far from. I remember this little stack at 150. I was like, man, if we could just get above 156, this looks like it could really get going. And it's gotten that move, man. And that came from all the way down there at 125 when it was really weak. When it looked like Apple might have go might go back towards 100. And now we're we're looking at it like almost back at all time highs. I mean, yeah, I, I I gotta say I am surprised by Apple's chart when the whole market is really not doing anything, and yet they're looking at new all time highs in the very short future. That is a sign of a stock that you want to own if the market turns around, right? That's a big leg up. That's a big head start for the market if the whole market itself decides to start being bullish again. Yeah, and and I mean, I know the chat's even talking about a little bit about gold turning around there. I saw it turning around there. I didn't see too much strength today, and I thought that maybe, you know, maybe you'd get that little gold move. But look how GLD is selling off here. It doesn't look that good. No. Um, If gold's coming down there, that was kind of like the one kind of silver lining there. Um, I know a lot of people have been looking at Bitcoin and things like that. Let's see how the banks are doing right now. We're finally starting to get a little bit of a leak there in Bank of America, but not really much in the KRE. Let's take a look here. Still holding on to like 36. So we'll see how the end is here. But now it looks like we're starting to let go a little bit. But look where NVIDIA went pretty much nowhere, team. We've gotten a little bit of a down move, but not really much here. Slow down, it seems like here towards the end. We'll, we'll have to wait and find out. Any last comments you got for me, Chris? Man, just remember that holding cash is a trade, right? Yeah, you don't have to be busy. Is. You can sit on your hands and you can wait for that right opportune moment and then pounce. But in the meantime, relax. Take a couple days off. Take a week off and let the market let you t- let the market tell you which direc- direction it's going. I'm stumbling over my words all over the place. No worries. Let the market and, tell you which way it's going. And if not, you know, you can you know, you can just always take out that new Tesla for a spin. Yeah, that thing is so fast. Oh my, it's scary fast. <laughs> it's it has that same feeling when like you go over the hill on a roller coaster, uh, whenever you put the foot the the accelerator down. It is. There like, you oh, go, my, my friend. Oh, What's up? Hey, you be crazy. safe out there, my friend. <laughs> I'm gonna try. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Take Mitch. care, Chris. Always good to have you, my friend. You guys check out 10minutestocktrader.com if you guys are looking for ways to get a quick aspect into the market. And you guys see, Chris. Keeps it simple. We'll bring you back, my friend. Have a good one. Talk soon. Take care. All right. That's going to do it for us today. In just a few minutes, we'll be wrapping up. Let's take a look at the SPY. Let's take a look at what I'm going to do with this NVIDIA trade here because uh, we're pretty much getting a little bit of a bounce. I was looking for a little bit of a cut down there. And we got down there to the 285s. So maybe could have taken you know about a 0.37 there. And I'm still in the green right now. But I'm looking for the kind of the real cut down move. And we're just not getting it here. Uh, SPY overall, now you're seeing a little bit of a lift here towards the end. We could see a little bit of a cut down at the end here with the KRE, but we're not going anywhere. So I talked about it how with NVIDIA. I only want to be swinging into it if I'm deep into the position here. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably just going to take the, the gain and run here because it just doesn't seem like it's something that I want to hold overnight. Maybe if I still had my original entry all the way up here, I could battle it overnight. But this is a chart that can always pop back, right? Yes, it could be right back there towards 290s. I could find it back at 278 tomorrow. But to tell you the truth, too much risk here being on above the 9 EMA instead of below the 9 EMA. If we were closing below the 9 EMA, let's say towards like this 280 here, 
and maybe I hold it a little bit. But I'm just going to go ahead and take the cash here. It's going down a little bit here. So I'll go ahead and I'll just cover here. Boom. Just took there 285, 21s. I will take that. Not too bad there on NVIDIA on the day. Taking some gain there on NVIDIA towards the close. And these ended up being day trades. But am I mad about that? No. Sometimes they're going to be day trades. Sometimes they're going to be swings. Of course, NVIDIA coming down here. There's going to be days where I want to hold it. Days where I just want to cut to kind of break even. Norwegian Cruise Lines is one that I'll definitely keep an eye out. We'll see if it turns back around tomorrow. Definitely don't want to see it cut through kind of like the 13, 25s and 13s. I want to see it start working its way back there towards the 14s tomorrow. Added to this one today, slight red on this one down about 1.76%. We'll see what happens tomorrow in NCLH. Let me catch some uh, in the chat. MGNI, Magnite, one that I like, AJ. So let's take a look at that one. I've talked about this one in the past. I really like programmatic advertising. So I like names like PubM. I like names like, um, what's the other one? TTD in this space. So we'll see if these can go higher, right? PubM. Let's see how that one's doing right now. That one actually pretty decent move there off of the Magnite move. And so if you're looking for a sympathy play, that was a sympathy play. Magnite getting a nice little lift here, a nice little pullback to VWAP. They had decent earnings. Let me take a peek right uh, again at their earnings here, kind of bring them up. Uh, Magnite earnings here at four cents, beating the loss of four cents. Sales at 130.15, beat the 110 estimate. So actually pretty good move there for Magnite. I would I would keep this one on my radar. It's up there almost to 12. Of course, this one could pull back, but it looks like you're going to run into resistance right around here in the 12s. Let's see if we can get above that going towards 13. And a really nice move there for Magnite. Next stop, 13. And from there, you'll also run into some resistance at 14. So there's some pretty good resistance coming into it, but really good day there for MGNI. Cruise lines. Yeah, I took the shot there. NCLH is what I'm going after. RCL has been the best of breed as of late. And maybe if CCL can pull back below 10, that's not bad. That's not a bad one that I might take a shot on also. Woof, woof, uh, woof with a nice little move here towards the close. Does it have earnings after the bell? Easy. You let me know, man. But uh, a quantum, let me know. Because it, it is making a little move here higher. Petco is one that I've always kind of believed in. Have yet to make a really good trade on it. And it's just been kind of on this huge decline. So let me see the, the trend change. And maybe one day I can play that one. Baba. Baba looks like there was some Chinese kind of a shopping event that was driving higher. It did do a nice little BWAP bounce in the day. JD recovering today after this decline. Nice move there. That's why it's so important to keep up with a lot of like kind of the action that's going on. I didn't know about the Chinese uh, shopping event until just recently. So nice little move there in JD here towards the close. You can look at PDD having the same kind of move. Baidu even having a decent move. So these Chinese names really getting going here. Baba, nice little push there uh, today. And the turnaround off the 80s. I know if there was someone that reached out to me saying, man, I see the bottom on Baba, 80, 80, 80, 80. Should I risk off of that? Hey, man, I can't tell you guys what to do, but if you see a level like that and you want to go off of it, the same thing I told him. What did I tell him? I said, hey, as long as you know you're out, you can take any trade, man. Just know you're out. That's what matters a lot of the times. You guys see how that's held the 80s back up there towards 87 today. Not looking too bad there in Baba. My guess is Wolf is weighed down by their brick and mortar stores. Yeah, MD, but that should give them an advantage. To tell you the truth, Brick and mortar stores really do give an advantage nowadays because there's so much things like, let's say, DoorDash, right? I order so many food from Petco and I don't even order it from Chewy. Why? Because they get it faster from Petco. I get it faster from Wolf. I don't know what's really holding them back in the long run because they're using their brick and mortars kind of like uh, distribution centers. And if they use it like that, then does it give them an advantage? It kind of does. So I don't know what happens there. Two minutes, 30 seconds. Be careful out there, guys. Don't get picked off too much here towards the close. We'll see what happens tomorrow. I think we get a jobs report. That will be a very interesting one. 
And we'll keep battling to see what happens in the market. NVIDIA is bouncing a little bit here. So kind of glad I just took my money and ran here as we start to get a little bit of a bounce towards the close. And I was looking for it, like just a quick action. It was either going to happen or not. And you guys see it wasn't one that looked good. CCL bearish looks uh, starting and is stuck under the VWAP. Yeah, I mean, I, I think in the long run, though, uh, cruise lines are looking good, man. They're having a lot of kind of backing demand. So it doesn't look too bad of a trade right now. All right, let's go back. Let's take a look at what else is going on here towards the close here. Let's get to the SPY. SPY overall bouncing back to the 412s, wants to get back over the 412.50s. We'll see what happens Sideways days, sideways days, but not really breakdown days. And I think this is all about the banks kind of holding on today. Financial services are actually up today. But as you guys can see, we did get a little bit of some cut down there in the KRE coming down. This is what I'll keep watch on. Does PacWest finally disappear? Do we hear more concerns out of different banks? That's the what we got to keep an eye on for. And of course, will the news hit or not? That's something to think about. GDX, GDX short, not too bad. Nice little profit there. Chip green, can't blame you on that one as gold really fell off the tape today. And you're taking cash there towards the low of the day. Can't be mad on taking profits, baby. That's money in the bank. Take it and run, man, run. All right, that's going to do it for us. 359, we're going to get out of here. It's 4 p.m. Like always, smash the like, guys. I will see you guys on pre-market prep tomorrow. Smash the like. And like always, check out everything that we have for you guys right here on Benzinga. We'll see you next time, team.